Hello, it's been a while since I last made a video and during that time I've been busy working been learning about more on data science, more about the Rust programming language and um, in this video I really want to share with you guys what I've been working on and um, some of my perspectives on the data science ecosystem especially the the more traditional machine learning ecosystem um, because that's what I work with every day um, this video is about traditional machine learning not about um, large language models uh, not about like higher dimensional models um, it's more about the traditional tabular data sets and um, and I w what I've what I've been working on in my free time. So yeah, as you can see on the screen, I've been working on a project called uh, Polars for Data Science. So if you guys know me, if you guys watched my like earlier videos, maybe from <laughs> a few years ago, it's it's, it's really a, it's really been a while. Um, I kind of started in my free time to explore. Rust, the programming language, and uh, trying to understand, okay, can how can I use a language that is as fast as C or, or C++, like how can I use that language to help me with my uh, job, right? Mostly with data processing, and then I realized, okay, it's actually not a bad idea to do data science with Rust. Now, there are some difficulties, of course. Um, how do you enter up with say numpy matrices right how do you make things work with data frames and the the biggest development in my opinion is the um the advent of a data frame package called polars and i think i also made a video on polars a while back and Polars is a blazingly fast data frame library written in Rust and it provides an extension system which allows you to plug more complicated functionalities directly into the data frame. So why do I think that is important? Well, in the traditional learning the traditional machine learning space the object that is the most central to every data process, to every like modeling process, is actually the data frame. Why is that? Well, um, because in every kind of business, right, people use some kind of SQL, some kind of table to store their data. Let's say you want to like approve a loan, right? You ask the credit credit bureau to send you like uh, lots of features about the person's historical uh, default rates, is this person's kind of activity in the uh, activity in the uh, I don't know uh, online activity, the borrowing money, that kind of activity. Um, then you get a tabular data set, right? Let's say you are working with um, insurance, like is this guy, um, how many accidents has this person had in the past few years, those kind of stuff. It's all tabular. So tabular is very, tabular data is very common in the, it's the most common data set in traditional machine learning. And and the natural, the natural uh, form it's not a matrix, right? It should be a data frame to represent those tabular data. I mean, every business starts with some kind of um, database, which is most of the time tabular. And every reporting metric you want to see is again tabular. Um, now, what Polars enables you to do is to write um, expressions that are more complicated than, say, the the most common SQL expression. The most common SQL expressions. What are they? Right? They are the sum, max, 
minimum uh, maybe some like analytical window expressions uh, group by some ac some kind of aggregations those kind of stuff but what what polars allows you to do is to write more complicated expressions and uh, you can plug it in so that the data frame understands your code and it can execute it so for example ROCA you see which is a very common metric used in reporting right if you have like a, a binary classification model you probably want to look at your ROC and then you see right log loss too and uh, if you say deploy a model in production what you need to do next is you know you need to monitor the performance of the model right you need to generate those plots like monitors and alerts uh, if the ROC is too low obviously you need to do something about the model right um, so this kind of query now becomes available in polars because um, you can write some rust code and put it in polars as an extension right so here polars for data science is my project and it is an extension to the polars data frame and it allows you to add more complicated data science um, functions as expressions in the polars data frame in in the entire system right um, so what are some cooler examples right this is pretty cool right you can do uh, you can do a group by and then you can run these expressions in the group by context no problem what are some cooler stuff well you can actually run because now you have the power of a programming language which is rust uh, which you know is very fast and also you have the power of the the data frame polars right um, polars if you don't know polars execute everything in parallel by default so if I write these two expressions here and it knows that okay this and this they are kind of independent with each other so they can be executed in parallel and what's even better is that okay since this is a group by exp expression right th this thing happens in a group by context uh, when you are doing like a group by what's really happening is that the, the data frame needs to be partitioned into a few parts right the, depending on the segment and that part is again parallel because polars is running it there's no engineering cost to make things fast and um, and okay and in, in addition right we have a programming language which is rust which can do a lot more uh, than just polars by itself so it turns out that you can embed even more complicated expression now because all you need to do is you know uh, take in data from polars transform that into some kind of more complicated data structure in rust and once you are done once you have extracted all the information you want from the data put it back into a format that polars understand and this is what this query is about so this query basically starts with a data frame that has three variables and we want to use those three variables as features and um, we want to use ID column as an index and I'm saying that okay find me everything within radius 0 0.1 of each row right and I'm calling that best friend so what does this mean right it's like a you're querying, you're looking at similar um, people, right? So for ID 0, obviously 0 is within 0.1 distance from 0, and so are some other points. They are close to this, so they are friends with each other. I mean, um, So this kind of stuff, traditionally, you have to go through another data structure, which is called a KD tree, which you can find in scikit-learn or scipy um, but it now turns out that okay if you only want to do this in a data frame context you don't need to um, 
all the dirty work can be handled in the background by Rust. You don't really need to say, okay, from scikit-learn dot, uh, I don't know, kn import nearest neighbor or something. You don't really need to do that because, well, I've already done it for you, right? Because this is all this package is about. It's about um, bringing those complicated queries into polars as expressions and hopefully that will make your life better and make your processes run faster. Uh, that's the entire goal. So um, sure, this is cool. What else have I done, right? So you can actually now generate random columns like this. You don't really need NumPy. Um, Sure, of course, polars, you can also put NumPy arrays in polars nowadays. Um, but if you want to stick with pure polars, yeah, and only Rust, yes, you can do this. This is all provided by the package. And um, here's an example of linear regression. So a lot of times when you run linear regression, you you kind of want to know the, the coefficients on each segment or category. Um, obviously, you can do that. And um, if you um, e explore the package a little bit more, you can actually do like a recursive linear regression, lasso linear regression. This one is rich linear regression. So I've done a lot um, already. And uh, let's say you're working with your data frame and um, you're working with strings, right? Which happens quite often. Let's say you are looking at um, added distance, right? String similarity. And uh, it, most of the common ones are built in for you. Levenstein distance, um, optimal string alignment, uh, Jarrow Winker distance. It's already built for you. And let's say you are doing some kind of uh, statistical testing, and in in this case, you might care more about like running these tests in a group, right? So yeah, of course you can do that. Um, and these tests, by the way, if you if you have done enough SQL, you probably know that you can like write SQL procedures that computes these statistics. Uh, you don't really need to say, let's say you already have a data frame, you already have a query language, you don't really need to go through SciPile just to say, okay, import this, run this, and then you get back some kind of data structure, like a statistical result, and then get the p-value and then the, and the statistics from there. That That's like too much code, too much extra code you're actually writing, and the, and the presentation of SignPy, right, once you go through these other packages, the presentation of the final result kind of is not what you want, because in the end, you want to put things into tabular form so that you can better present them or run further analyses or further processes on the data, right? You can do some filtering. Um, once you have this kind of data, the, the first number here is the statistic, the second number here is the p-value. Once you have this kind of stuff, you can run, f you can do a filter on the p-value, you can rank by the statistics, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, but if you use, say, SignPy or other tools, it just becomes harder, and you have to write more code, and what do we know? Like, as data scientists, what do we know? We know that Python is kind of slow, we know that if you write, it's so easy to write so many lines of Python, and then the next person who looks at it will never understand. However, once you have this kind of language, this kind of syntax, everybody will understand. And no one else needs to write those convoluted um, wrappers of wrappers of wrappers anymore. Convolution, for example, it is very useful when you want to generate features for time series analysis. Um, also, like there is, um, I've been working on a pipeline system, which um, 
which is very opinionated because I, I kind of want all the logic to be visible. I don't want to initialize classes, right? If you know that in scikit-learn, if you want to say impute stuff, you have to um, like create a class which is called a simple imputer or something, and then that. And then if you want to put it into a pipeline, you have to like append it to the pipeline, which is again a lot of code, a lot of it hides the logic. I mean, it doesn't hide the logic, but it complicates the logic. On the other hand, uh, I'm tr I'm trying to build a system where um, where the pipeline to define a pipeline first you define a blueprint and the blueprint is purely logic it's just there's nothing else it every method is tells you what it does and it, everything does one thing perfectly well and it just a continuous chaining of different kind of transforms and that is um, I mean at least my opinion how transformer how transforms and pipelines should be put together <laughs> um, and you can see a lot more ex examples um, if you just um, browse the repo uh, here I have an example folder and um, you can see lots of stuff here everything is demoed in the Jupyter Notebook um, to run the notebook you might need to uh, clone this repo and uh, install the most up-to-date commit you might need to um, but yeah, it's at version 0.5 right now, and I'm planning to make a release either next week or by the end of next week. Um, anyway, this is really a brief introduction. Um, obviously, I want some help because uh, it's been mostly me. Um, and I'm trying to do a lot. I'm trying to make traditional machine learning fun again. Uh, I don't want everything to be dependent on scikit-learn, partly because the architecture of scikit-learn is really not the best, and I want to bring data frame into, like, I want to, I want a machine learning package that really treats data frame as a center, as the most central object, and that's why I've built this project and. Um, Feel free to leave me a comment either in this video or in the issue section on GitHub. Um, yeah, it's been a while and um, I will obviously make a more formal introduction later. Um, feel free feel free to explore the package before I do that. Alright, thank you. Bye.